Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Irina. We're doing that challenge where it's not a challenge actually. I read one star reviews of my favorite books. Without further ado, let's start. I will try my best to not take these things uh, personally, but I don't promise anything, okay? Okay. If you didn't like this book, I'm sorry that your time was wasted on something that you didn't like. Tastes are different, so it's fine. I have I have a one star book that many, many people love it. I still don't get it, but it is what it is. So I will try not to um, get offended myself by, by the comments here, as if I was the author of the book. But anyways, let's go. I, I want to find a small review, but all of them, they go into detail why they did it. I guess I'm gonna choose one and read that. Was this book well written? No. Did I still enjoy it anyway? Also no. For the character that she is, Adi Ed LaRue would simply have been invisible to everyone, even in normal circumstances. So if you don't know, this book is about Ed LaRue, obviously, and she is invisible because she has, um, um, she had a deal with the devil and like gods who answered at night. So she meets people and after a while, like once, the, once she is out of those people's view sight, the memory of her gets erased and she is immortal by the way. Um, immortal until she wants to die. Like the, the devil, dark god told her, if you want to die, just let me know, but this is your curse. Um, so yeah, she if she wants to be done with this life, she can be, but she chooses to, to keep going. And anyway, so I, I really love the um, premise and I really love the writing. And to be honest, the characters were also amazing in my opinion. I wouldn't say they were this detailed, fully fleshed characters only because we don't have much time, you know? It's not a uh, 16 book series. This is just a standalone fantasy book, which is something that I love. And like, you can do so much in a series, but uh, writing a standalone fantasy book is not that easy. So also I need to emphasize that this is my second year reading books. Like I have no experience in reviewing books, to be honest, not, not reviewing. Like, um, I don't know what good writing means because I have not had the proper experience, I would say. Um, the most of the books that I've read, um, like I, I, I have enough to say, but that doesn't mean that I know what constitutes as a good writing, you know, because I don't have that proper education, let's say. So if someone says that it's a bad writing, I'm not gonna like dismiss that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I felt this was really, really good writing, but um, so many, many like essay-like uh, reviews like negative reviews of this book says that the the plot was non-existent and the characters were non-existent. I don't know. I like them. I, I like all of the characters. <laughs> I'm gonna read one more. Oh my god, everyone has written a like 400 word essay. If you like this book, good for you, but fuck me it was boring. <laughs> Overhyped and underwhelming. This book can sit on my middle finger and rotate. I'm finally breaking my silence because I hadn't looked that I started reading this last year. Maybe it's because I repressed this book as far as I could go. Genuinely found zero redeeming qualities in this book. I DNF'd this last year, but I, I finally dragged myself through the last 100 pages today because I'm stubborn and, and refuse to DNF unless it's a crime against humanity. Um, I'm gonna see the positive here and say that she has read uh, verse books. <laughs> At least this is not a crime against humanity. Uh, I was basically bored to tears. I can't believe a premise with such great potential was taken and turned into this. The and then some lines were just... I was so confused because it went from being very good writing okay, to stuff I could have written in sixth grade. Here is a comparison, I don't know why, but as soon as I read these lines, I recalled a few lines from a greater piece of literature. 
so invisible like a regular river. No one is ever ready to die. Ever, even when they think they want to, no one is ready. He isn't ready, but it is time. It is time. And then she compares it to um, Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Mayer. Reality was red and it felt like I was being sold in half, hit by a bus, punched by a prize fighter, trampled by bulls, and submerged in acid all at the same time. Reality was filling my body twist and flip when I couldn't possibly move because of the pain. Reality was knowing there was something so much more important than all this torture. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> and not being able to remember what it was. Reality had come on so fast. Let me know which is better because there's a right answer and the wrong answer. Okay, but this part, I'm gonna say, yeah, this, this part is better, but... To be honest, I don't like when a plot-driven book uh, focuses on so much on the writing style. Like, oh, uh, again, this one. Like, reality was knowing there's so much more important. Like, get to the point. And <laughs> maybe it's the reading style. Like, I don't want to spend my time uh, knowing the colors of the sky. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm I'm down with reading for uh, Adela Rue. This book is my one of my favorite standalone fantasy. Not one of my one, one and only favorite standalone fantasy. Uh, all the other fantasies are a part of a series. So, which leads to my next book, Scythe, a sci-fi dystopian fantasy book, a book one of the Arc of Scythe series, and this book is my second favorite uh, of this year. And um, in this world, I, I've talked about this book all like in all of my videos. In this world, of artificial intelligence uh, improved so much that it turned like, unlike the other books, the here the artificial intelligence is a good guy and is helping the humanity. And it is actually the greed of humanity that is the, the villains of the story. Like, I, I love this book so much. Okay, they all have such long, um, long comments, which I like. Uh, to be honest, I relate. I can talk about the books that I hate for hours on end. And I can only tell you so much about the books that I love because I want you to read it, okay? I don't want to <laughs> spoil it. So, anyways, I'm going to read this from Becky. Becca. <laughs> I'm starting the review. Sigh. I, I clearly read a very different book than apparently everyone else did. That's the most logical scenario here because the book I read does not warrant a 4.36 average rating. It, it just doesn't. It's barely deserving of a lukewarm meh and that's being generous oh my god the world building wasn't that good the writing wasn't that good the story wasn't that good the plot was a joke there were twists that were telegraphed like that signal There were twists that were telegraphed like a bat signal and the ending was so predictable that I was just waiting for the end to finally roll around because I picked what was going to happen long before I got there. I finished this a few hours ago and I've been sitting here wondering what the point of any of it is. That's never a good thing. But hey, let's be nice and start off with the things that I liked. I like that it didn't end in a contrived cliffhanger to force the reader to continue past the first book. I like that too about anyways. I like that the <laughs> I like that it was a library book and I didn't spend any money on it. I like that it's over now. Humanity has eradicated death. Life is now indefinitely extended to the point of pra practical mortality immortality sorry uh injuries are healed and even death is impermanent because people who die are revived automatically great but population ex is exploding and earth has finite resources whatever shall we do i know let's deputize a couple thousand people worldwide lawfully murder people to keep the population in check well, that is what the point of the book is. Like, mm, the the art. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be explaining the book. So I shouldn't be defending. I guess. But to me, this makes sense. Like, 
keeping the uh, number of people down, like keeping the population with actual people, not with AI, I think that's a great story. I think that's a, I don't know, I don't know, I, I really love that. Let's not use any form of reproductive limitation. Let's not, I don't know, set term limits on life in any way. Let's not allow people who die by some random or accidental means, or even those who commit suicide, to stay dead. Let's instead allow people to live forever, breed like habit rabbits. Uh, one guy had 20 kids by a couple wives and then sanctify humans murdering other humans with a quota as best as the best means of dealing with the unsustainable population that results to be honest it is said that there are, there are plenty of resources for human human life because they don't even only after a few hundred years i think if i remember correctly then it will be a problem that we have right now in our real lives like there are some hunger like i understand that some plot holes could be like uh annoying and stuff like that but i don't think that was a plot hole anyways i'm not i'm not going to defend it okay anyways i hate okay ali's review i hate this and i feel bad i've heard so many good things about this book so many i tried so hard to like it but i really can't get into it at all I didn't like the characters. Hell, I can barely even remember the, their names. I don't get why they were chosen to be the ones to become apprentices. I see nothing special about them. And honestly, the whole the whole do it for the lols, for things happening for the first time in that world thing just kind of pisses me off. Plot twist near, near the end was pretty great though, no lie. So yeah, don't like it. Can't remember much of it, even though I finished this not even two hours ago. Love the summary. Don't love the actual book. Yep. Do it for the lols. I, to be honest, I don't get that. Like, who did it for the lols? I don't understand that. Disagree. Respectfully, I disagree. One more and I'll move on. Without any doubts, one of the worst written books I have ever read in my life. Oh my god. I will let some of the verse lines speak for me. Describing opera. The music was rich and pretty. Uh, describing silence. What filled the void was dot dot dot. Well, dot dot dot, a void. I don't know. I don't think that's bad, but what do I know? A crowd of editors and no one knew that what they shout in par parliament is here, here and not here. Here, here. How can an author not know this? Here, here. Shouted. One of the sides in the back. Wow, I don't remember this part either. Um, okay, I'm not going to take this uh, to heart. Okay, I love the book. This was one of those books that, even though the main characters were 16 years old, it did not bother me. Characters being. Um, wise beyond their age was like they it made sense last book is gonna be funny story by emily henry um i have read three or four of emily henry books and i have loved all of them funny story is my most favorite out of all of that i am all for recycling but does she have to keep writing the same book every year I don't, I don't know. Boring, repetitive, bland characters, a, a MC that moans every time she eats something. Is this some kind of weird new sex thing? Was I supposed to be turned on? Sparks were definitely flying, but that, but that's just because I consider setting myself and the book on fire multiple times. I was actually gonna give this two stars, but the more I think about it, the more I hate it. I also also, I'm in a very bad mood, lol. I have said this, I can't read. I have said it that I have said it with book lovers before, and I will say it again. All her books feel the same. Wake me up in two days' time and yell the names Alex, Gus, and Miles at me, and I will struggle assigning them to the right books. I don't even remember Happy Place MMC, and I actually like that book. Man, whatever. 
those two had about the same amount of chemistry as me and the work project I have been putting off for weeks because it bores me to death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These characters need personality development training and self-help books, not same love story. Not some love story. I have not read many romance books, but out of every single romance author, I think Emily Henry is the best. And with her characters, I feel like I'm watching, like, uh, not even a movie. Like, with her characters, I feel like they're not even a book character. Like, I feel like they're real people. Because even though they are not in the scene, they are like s somewhere else doing something else, they have a real life and they do have their own life. They are not there to be a part of, like, be a decoration for uh, the main character's life. You know what I mean? Like, um, many other books that I have read, especially in the romance books, they all feel like, I don't know, like Hallmark romance movies. And that is something that I really, really dislike. What do you mean they need personality development training and self-help books? I mean, I, I, I get the self-help part because they mostly are in a bad situation. They are working through their own stuff. But aren't we all? Aren't we all? Like, this is like actual real person problem uh, versus, let's say, Ali Hazelwood's woman in STEM who has better things to think about, but all she can think about is the Adam that is the is the guy who like who doesn't even care about other people. Like I'm not even done with that book, but I'm already like it, it's already one star for me because how the character acts. Because you're a woman in STEM. It is already difficult for you. Why like you would not like a, a woman in STEM, I don't think would not care that much about a man like um i don't know i don't know i don't know and i have studied engineering okay you you can't say that i don't know i have been in male dominated place and i have been looked down upon and i know that you should you, like i know there is a way that you are supposed to act just to be taken seriously and that's all i'm gonna say I'm gonna read Dylan's review and I'll be done. Emily did us dirty with this one. I am personally victimized by how poorly thought, thought through this story is. The best way I can explain it is it feels like she was uninspired but had a deadline. So she, she threw a few ideas down, leaned into, to, leaned into a few basic tropes and then added a lot of filler to fill a whole book's worth, whole book's worth of pages. First of all, a cripplingly insecure 35-year-old librarian is simply not who I want to lead an Emily, Emily Hendrick book, or any book. Second of all, every single element of this story feels half-baked. The mom who isn't worn, but is also her best friend, which, yeah, I, I noticed that too. Like, in the beginning, it felt like she is estranged from her mother, but by the end, they were so close. I, I didn't get that um i guess this might anyways i'm not going to defend okay um the dad who isn't relevant but then becomes the core storyline the long distance friend who is also mostly irrelevant but takes up the most of the epilogue stupid i think that is the main like that is the story like you are not how you are your whole your your whole life you know you just something happens and then you just work on it and change it just because it was that way doesn't mean it shouldn't end like how you started it but you know like in the beginning the dad was non-existent basically but by the end uh they try to re re something reconnect uh there's some some other word that i'm going to say but yeah let's say reconnect by the end they reconnect the dad and the main girl mm, so um I, I don't think this is a bad side side the what is like the mom being one way and then like 
suddenly she turns into this person like the only redeeming quality to this story is the adorable miles who seems sweet and hot and thoughtful even if totally hypocritical if not for him i would not have finished from one emily henry lover to another skip this one I respectfully disagree. I feel like this was one of her bests. I'm sorry that you didn't like it, um, but should I do Sometimes I Lie too? Okay, I'm gonna do one more thriller too. One thriller that I gave five stars to is Sometimes I Lie by Elise Feeney. One of her, my most favorite book for, from her is Rock, Paper, Scissors. There I finished Sometimes I Lie and I really, really liked it. And let's read three negative reviews from this one in this book there's a woman who um who is in a coma and she is narrating what she sees to us um and back and forth like in in her like present in a coma and her back story like then uh storyline i actually forgotten the names of these characters but yeah uh let's read i want to read something like small like i don't want to read the whole thing Yikes, convoluted plot that's all over the place. Well, um, I, I think Alice Finney's, all, all of the Alice Finney's books are convoluted. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm quite obviously in a tiny minority here. This is a book I should have really enjoyed. Needless to say, that didn't happen. My biggest problem was that I was confused almost all the time. Once the twist was revealed regarding the diary entries, I was so confused. I had to continuously keep flipping keep flipping back to the page with reveal on it with the reveal on it so it, i could remember who i was reading about and if they were good bad both whatever human dead who knows this might have just been a problem with me and my specific reading experience but my god i was so confused i ultimate ultimately i was left feeling so empty everyone's crazy everyone's evil i don't care uh, there is an absolutely disgusting rape scene and another separate sexual assault scene that was completely unnecessary and gross and I really contemplated putting this, putting the book down when that happened. Every single person in this book sucks. The ending was just there. What a disappointment. How do I say so that I don't sound crazy? I really liked the fucked up things that happened in the book. Uh, I think that really cemented the characteristics of the um, of the people. Um, I don't know. I really liked it. And the the where she says like I could I had to go back and forth just so I could remember. That is the that is the reason why I love Alice Finney's books so much. Like by the end, like the reveal by the like when everything is revealed, you are left to contemplate like what happened like when, when you were reading something you were under the impression that you are reading about this person but after the revelation everything has changed like either the entries were told by uh, another person uh, than who you were imagining or you had in mind or uh, the entry is about someone totally different than who you were imagining so that is the convoluted part that i actually love about alice finn's books but um i guess it's not everybody's cup of tea i guess sometimes i lie by alice finney dnf i will be in the minority i know but i just couldn't finish it i don't care who put her in a coma i don't care about her i just don't care wow okay okay i mean um, it does take a lot of time for you to understand what's going on and like sometimes it may take a, too long It may sometimes it may take so long that you don't even care and you put down the thing Which is what happened with this person and which is the same thing that happened with me uh, when I was reading uh, Misery by Stephen King that is the first and only so far book that I have not finished and it was because anyways it, that's not this video is not about that um yeah i understand um i was on the same boat i still love my books i still think they are amazing um there were some points about uh invisible life of Adele LaRue that 
more experienced people in writing and in reading uh, I feel like I don't I don't think they would they would be mean just to be mean I feel like they had a, a substantial uh, reasoning for like saying the plot was non-existent the people were like on like they their characters weren't developed or this and that but I don't know sometimes when you like something you can look past the holes like plot holes any other holes uh, you can look past them I guess but these books I feel like if if there were something that I actually didn't actually didn't like I would have looked past um, as well I guess um, the same thing um, I also gave five stars to the second book in a uh, scythe series something happened in there that I really really dislike but just because I love the series I love the world so much that I just look past it I I know that if it was some other book um, or maybe the first book even I wouldn't like it but just because it's a second book I'm already invested um, I and even though I didn't like that particular thing I should have maybe given it four stars instead of five stars but overall I loved it so much that I gave five stars and the same thing with Caraval I sometimes the sometimes the characters made so many stupid um, decisions and um, one thing that I hated about that book was that maybe I do this this will happen you don't know that why would you assume in a magical world that your assumption is correct when your life is on the line I don't think that's that's a good uh, plot point I think that's just a lazy writing but I love the world so much I love the other parts of the writing so much that I look past it and I gave five stars so maybe I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be like in the middle uh, even though they hated it even though I loved it that doesn't negate the the other ones point I guess <sighs> anyway so everyone's happy I'm glad that I read that um, and um, I'm, I'm sorry that you didn't find them amusing or interesting or they were your waste of your time but anyways um, that is all for me for this video like and subscribe comment uh, what you think about these books and I will see you in my next video bye